Does this set of all sets that do not contain themselves contain itself? Why is that even an important question? What even is a set? A naive way to describe a set is that a set is a box which can contain a bunch of different objects. For instance, a box could contain an orange and an apple, and this would be described as a set containing an orange and an apple. It is important to note that if you had a box with two oranges and an apple, it would be considered the same as the first box. We are only concerned with what types of objects are in the box. You could also put boxes in a box. Here we have a box which contains a box with an orange and an apple, and another box with an apple and a banana. The outside box contains two objects, which just so happen to also be boxes. You could also have a box which contained an apple, and another box which also had an apple in it. This box would also contain two different objects since a box with an apple is different than just an apple. If you had a box with nothing in it, it is called the empty set. What if you had a box which contained nothing but an empty box? Would this also be empty? No, the empty box is considered an object, so the outside box contains something. Now things are going to start getting weird. Could a box contain itself? Let's say you have a box with an apple and an orange, and it also contains another box with an apple and an orange. Does this box contain itself? Not really. The outside box contains three objects. An apple, an orange, and a box which also contains an apple and orange. The inner box only has two objects. It is missing its own box with all the things in it. But this box would also need to contain a box. And that box would need to contain a box. And this would go on to infinity. What if you had a set of all the sets which contain themselves? This would be a box that contains a bunch of boxes which all contain themselves. Would this box contain itself? Technically, it could contain itself or not, and in both cases would follow the rule. If it did not contain itself, it would have no need to contain itself because it does not contain itself. If it did contain itself, then everything is good because it contains itself. What about a set which contains all the sets which do not contain themselves? This would be a box which had all the boxes that don't do that weird thing where they need to have boxes with the same thing infinitely. Maybe this is wishful thinking, but this seems like it would be easier than the set of all sets that do contain themselves. But it's not. If it did not contain itself, then it would be one of the sets which do not contain themselves, so it should contain itself by the rule. But if it did contain itself, then it would be breaking the rule as it should only contain sets which do not contain themselves. Another way to think about it is that if there is a barber who shaves all the people who do not shave themselves, does he shave himself? If he shaved himself, then he would be shaving someone who does shave himself. But if he did not shave himself, he'd be missing out on one of the people who don't shave themselves. It hurts the head a little thinking about it. It's a paradox. Russell's paradox to be specific named after mathematician Bertrand Russell, also known for space tea. This paradox, or any other paradox, means there's something wrong with the set of rules we use to describe something. It means there's something left to be known and that the picture is incomplete. Mathematics came up with two very different resolutions to this problem, and they are linked to in the description. One could be summarized as burning naive set theory to the ground and from the ashes building something new. And the other is saying, contain yourself! Let's just make some formal rules for set theory. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. Or if you'd like to suggest future topics, leave a comment.